we've known for a long time that gout clusters in families, uh, whether this is because the environment that they live in uh, is the same and they eat the same types of food, families tend to be thin together or obese together, um, but there's clearly a genetic predilec predilection as well. If you have a twin, for instance, that has gout, then it's very likely that you're also going to have gout. There are ethnic groups that, um, that certainly have a higher incidence of gout than Caucasian population. African Americans have about a 25 percent higher incidence of gout. If you get into the Asian populations, particularly southern China, the Huns, uh, the Taiwanese, and then if you're looking at uh, Micronesia, the, the Pacific Islanders, and uh, particularly the Maoris, that, that incidence of gout uh, can become much higher, particularly in the Maoris, that might be two to three times higher than what uh, the Caucasian population in the United States is. It's a disease over the, the years that tends to be a male predominant disease, and there is a sense that it's only men, but it's really not only men. Uh, women certainly do get gout, not as frequently as, as men do, and women do tend to get it when they're a little bit older after their estrogen levels are quite low, and it's the postmenopausal female more at risk uh, to develop gout. Men at any age can develop gout, and women at any age, but most commonly it's men getting it younger, women getting it postmenopausally. Patients with gout have a lot of comorbid uh, diseases. Uh, these are all metabolic diseases that are uniquely coupled to, to gout. And they include hypertension, chronic kidney disease, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and stroke. Um, the role of uric acid in the etiology of all of these various metabolic problems is under investigation and there is some debate and interest in understanding what uric acid does as far as initiating hypertension and kidney disease and, and heart disease. Mm -hmm.